Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be taking one of our materials uh, into Unreal again, um, but this time using one of the displacement textures uh, with Unreal's tessellation feature. First though, let's take a quick look at the file that we'll be using during this video. Um, it's ground asphalt broken 001. Uh, I already have that saved to my hard drive and I'll include a link to it below the video. You've probably heard of a bump map before, which is used to artificially give the impression of height in a material. Well, a displacement map is different. It is used to literally deform the object based on the values of the texture, with the black areas being the deep crevices and the white areas being the peaks. Now in Unreal, this is done by utilizing a feature called tessellation. So uh, let's jump over and take a look at how we do it. So this is the scene that we'll be using today. Again, it's a simple plane and a HDR lighting setup, and that's pretty much it. One difference from last time though, this plane is not the one of the auto-generated planes from Unreal. It's one I brought in um, that I made quickly in a uh, external application. Reason being, for tessellation to work, the mesh already needs to have quite a bit of geometry. As you'll see here, this mesh is made up of lots of little triangles, um, whereas the default mesh is just one, well, it's just two triangles basically, uh, which it isn't enough. Um, tessellation will subdivide your mesh to a certain degree, um, to give you more geometry, but it does have a limit. So you need to start with a mesh that already has quite a bit. So that's what I've done there. That's worth definitely worth noting. Other than that though, it's uh, yeah pretty much the same as what we had last time. Now I've already done some of the material work for us because there's no point going over what we've already covered. Um, I've brought in the uh, textures that we'll be using already they're sitting here in the in the textures folder and like before all of the all of the textures that don't contribute towards color have been set to um, linear mode I have unticked the sRGB um, including like the displacement texture here see sRGB is unchecked and like before the normal map has had the green channel flipped okay what I've also done is give us a basic uh, place to start from in terms of our material but before I go into it I'm actually going to drag it to the floor plane because it's it's a, it's a good example of, of uh, why we need to do some work now this floor while it's quite clearly a nice PBR material is not looking very realistic at all uh, if I go down to the ground level you see it's completely and utterly flat um, it's I mean if you were looking at it from a distance Aside from the uh, the tiling, you might be able to get away with it, uh, but certainly up close, it just it looks like a boring flat texture on a on a plane, which isn't quite what we want today. Anyway, let's go into our material and let's uh, get to work. So I've already sorted out the basic setup for the material here, um, like we did last time, um, or like we did in the first video, I should say. So we've got our uh, color reflection gloss and normal maps in uh, the reflection and gloss maps have been inverted like they were last time uh, and I've also put in some texture co texture coordinate controls um, again uh, this is all stuff that we've already done so what I'm going to do now is start showing you how to use the tessellation feature um, with one of our displacement textures so let's right mouse button here type in texture and grab a texture sample parameter 2d node and call this displacement. Should have really named the other ones, but hey ho. <laughs> um, and this is gonna follow the exact same UV mapping as all of our other textures, so I'll feed that in. And then we just need to change what the texture that it's using to the uh, displacement texture, which is there. Okay. So let's start by bringing in a vertex normal. WS node, okay? And then what we're gonna do, I mean, this is basically like the, what's the best way of explaining it? Uh, the, the the default state of the uh, of the tess tessellation, i.e. I num. It's like the, the position of the vertexes. Uh, it's probably the best way to, to try and uh, visualize it. And what we're gonna do is multiply that by our displacement texture. So let's do that, like so. And then what we'll do is feed that into the tessellation, sorry, the world displacement, like so. Now I'm gonna click on material and we have to scroll down here and actually turn on displacement. Uh, or oh, sorry, tessellation. 
and you've got a couple of modes flat tessellation and pn triangles the one we want is flat pn triangles is used on sort of um, if you're doing tessellations on quite a dense complicated mesh like say a character or whatnot it helps smooth off the edges but for a, a ground surface like this you want flat tessellation um, we're going to turn off adaptive tessellation for now that, that's a that's a sort of a performance feature um, that we that we're not going to touch and the max displacement is um, the amount the, the max amount that, that this will displace our mesh so we'll set that up to something ridiculously high for now because we want to control it via the notes now you'll notice so far not a lot of effect has uh, has gone on <laughs> I think you can see some slight changes to our material but it's a uh, it's certainly not um, not quite what we were hoping for <laughs> now you've got a tessellation multiplier here um, but we'll so what we're going to do is feed that up uh, feed something into that to see if we can give ourselves some more control over the amount of tessellation so we'll call this tessellation amount and feed that into the multiplier and then set that default value to 1 um, and we'll set these to 0.5 and 3 so let's take a look at 3 and see if that does anything for us no it still doesn't now the reason for this is all to do with the strength of the displacement at the moment okay so we're going to feed in a another parameter and multiply this texture okay so we're getting more strength from it so let's type in multiply add that up here and then feed that into there and then another parameter because we like our parameters like so and we'll call this um, I'm going to call it um, tessellation strength I'm misspelling tessellation but hey we'll just ignore that <laughs> and let's set this to a value of I don't know something like uh, 5 or 6 <laughs> if I hit the wrong key and we're starting to get a little bit of a bump coming out of it. Okay, maybe something like, I don't know, 50. Yeah, now we're getting some somewhere. A bit too far, in fact. So now I turn it down to 25. And now you can really see the effects starting to come into place. The, the basic sphere is being modified quite considerably um, by the displacement texture. And it's starting to look pretty good. However, because of the way that the... Uh, tessellation works in Unreal and um, this would have to be adjusted for every single object depending on the, the size of the object because it's the size of the object that dictates the amount of displacement if that makes any sense so what we're going to do instead is add in another multiply node like so and feed that up into world displacement instead and then we're going to bring in an object scale node no nope, that's not right object radius that's the one there we go now what this will do is it will multiply it for us um, so we can lower the strength you'll see now this has gone into like insane mode um, because it's taking the scale of the object into account so we can now lower this strength um, in fact the default one might be fine now that we've got that other node in place in fact that might even be too much but um, we'll see that when we I'm going to lower the scale a little bit here try and gauge if oh god yeah that actually might work pretty well on, on a value of one so um, for the min and max on this parameter I'm going to set it to about 0.2 and about 5 I very much doubt you'd ever need to go that high but may as well put the control in there and um, yeah uh, that's that's pretty much all the controls we'll need now bear in mind as you up this tessellation amount you will be increasing the amount of system resources used and whatnot and now that we've put in these other controls and we've realized that that probably isn't that wasn't the problem we can now lower that so I'm going to set that to one and I think that will still give us plenty of geometry it certainly seems to good okay so that's our material pretty much set up so at this point let's jump out of here I'm going to make an 
instance of it, like so. And then, oh god, that's already got our material on there, hasn't it? So I'm going to click on our divided plane and clear that material, and instead put on our instance. And yeah, still way too strong. So <laughs> let's uh, let's go about fixing that. So now that we've got our instance uh, material here, we can go in and set up these settings a little bit. So we've got the, the ground scale, tessellation amount, and tessellation strength. So what we'll do is lower the, in fact, we'll keep the amount, but lower the strength to say 0.3, okay? And that is starting, ignore those kind of, that, that kind of bounds thing. In fact, if I just hit play, it's a bit easier to see then, isn't it? There we go. We can start to see our ground working. And now if you compare this to kind of like the, the flat imagery that we had before, um, that is quite an improvement. Um, definitely some tweaking to be done though. So let's jump back into there, turn down the strength a little more, maybe 0 0.15, 0 0.17 maybe. And I'm also going to try lowering the tessellation amount because I think it was using more geometry than it needed to. So let's try that at about 0.5. Let it update. Yeah, maybe a little bit stronger. But this is the this is why you create these parameters and whatnot so you can quickly tweak and fiddle with it as you're going. Um, but yeah, for the purposes of a tutorial, I would say that we've done a good job. So in summary, we've taken a material from Polygon.com, brought it into Unreal like we've done before, though this time we use the displacement texture along with Unreal's tessellation feature um, to physically change the geometry of a ground plane um, with, some, uh, with some interesting results.